Welcome guys, in this two-part series I will first show you how to create a keyboard for player input in VR and in the second video I will show you how to save it all to a database and also in general interact with a database so you can save high scores or whatever you need in your game. Everything is available on Patreon for download if you have issues following along, uh, like and subscribe. Let's do it. So I'm creating an empty game object. I'm calling it keyboard. And this will be obviously the keyboard for the game. And inside this game object, I'll just create a normal 3D cube. I resize it to 0.1 on each axis. And that will be the key. And here I'll add a text mesh, mesh pro. Just import it. And now let's resize the canvas and change the font size and change the text to an A. So this will be the A key. Make it bold and let's rotate it so that it fits the key. I think that's about right. I want them to be black. And pull it down a little bit. Let's create a new folder, call it materials. I want a different material for the key than the plane I have here. So just apply it to the cube if I can, there we go and reposition the text a little bit. Then select the cube and set the collider to trigger, is trigger, and create a script. I'm calling it key feedback. And double click to open. And I'm sorry about the small text, guys. I forgot to zoom. I realized that about 15 minutes that I didn't zoom and I zoomed then. But you're gonna have to deal with this. So create a boolean, a bool, call it key hit and set it to false. Then create another bool. Call it key can be hit again and set that to false as well. Also create a float and call it original Y position. Now in the start method, let's get the original Y position by setting original Y equals transform.position.y. So in the update function, we first want an if statement checking if key hit is true. This is the same as saying just writing key hit is the same as writing key hit equals equals true. Anyway, set both the booleans to false and move the key down a little bit by adding a negative value to the y axis of the transform. And this transform is the key, obviously. So we're moving the key down a little bit. And when that happens, we can have another if statement checking if the current y position is less than the original y position then we want to move the key up again so we do the opposite here by having a positive vector y i'm gonna use let's say 0.005 each frame, and there we go. Now the key will travel up again. And else, if or if 
the Y is not less than the original Y, then it's back to the original position, so key can be hit again. So let's test it out a little bit, and that moves, great. Now I create a new game object, call it Sound Handler. This will handle the click sound, and create a script, and call that Sound Handler as well. Also, tag the empty game object as Sound Handler, so we can get it in the script. And apply the tag. Now open up the script. First create a public audio clip. I'm calling it uh, key clip. And then create a private audio source. I'm calling it click source. And let's grab that, create uh, that audio source by doing click source equals game object dot add component audio source that way we don't have to create it in the editor we can create it in the script instead and we just need one method one public method that will play the click sound whenever we call it so I'm doing public void play click key click Click source dot play one shot dot key clip. Oh, not dot, obviously. And there we go, that's all we need for the sound handler. So, my sound I found on freesound.org. You can find my sound on Patreon, or you can find your own sound online. I'm just importing my sound here. And I created a new folder for the sounds. And let's drag the sound in to the clip slot in the sound handler script. Next, we need to call this method in the key feedback script. So create a private variable and it's a sound handler. I'm naming it sound handler as well. And in the start method, we want to get the sound handler by finding its tag make sure you choose uh, game object not game objects no s and we want the game object tagged sound handler and on that game object we want to get the component sound handler and there we go now whenever a key is clicked we want to play the sound so let's call the method and there we go now we will play the sound and now let's create the keyboard. I have already done it up here, but it's super easy. Just copy the cube by uh, selecting it, Control D, drag it out. Now rename this cube and rename its. Uh, oh, change the text in the Text Mesh Pro. Make sure you do not have any extra spaces in the Text Mesh Pro, because then it will not work. Or it will work, but you will get extra spaces when you hit s as well and we don't want that i'm gonna delete these cubes and use this from now on so for the space bar it still has a text mesh pro but the font is set to zero the text is space it's important that we still have the text because we use that in the script so let's create <coughs> excuse me the drumsticks i'm creating one first in the left hand, just an empty game object with a cylinder inside it. I'm gonna resize the cylinder. And rotate it, of course. So that's good for now, might change that later. Remove the collider from the stick, the cylinder, and let's add a sphere. Make it smaller to whatever size you see fit, and drag it to the top of the stick. And 
that's good make sure the collider is a trigger and let's create another script I'm calling it key detector so I'm gonna reposition it a little bit and then I'm just gonna copy it and drag the copy to the other hand and I forgot to add rigid bodies to the spheres so do that and make them not no gravity and is kinematic should have done that before on the first one and there we go so double click to open the script and let's start by creating a private text mesh pro calling it uh, player text output and you need to import the using for text mesh pro so I'm gonna select text mesh pro alt enter using you can also just type in the using manually at the top that works as well in the start function we want to get the player text output the same way we got the sound handler so find the object with tag and when we get that tag that game object we want to get the component out of that object this is supposed to be get component in children I will go back and change it later but you can do it correct from now straight away get component in children text mesh pro so I'm um, on trigger enter method and this is where we will detect the key when we hit the trigger we will get the text mesh pro component from whatever object we hit then in the if statement we get the key feedback from the key and check if it can be hit again we can write it like this or just like this it's the same thing here we want to check what the text mesh pro text is on the key so if it is space then we want to make a space So player text output dot text plus equals a space. Else if key dot text is the uh, delete uh, back arrow thing, I'm not sure what it's called, this thing it's supposed to be one line not two I will change that in a second if this happens we want to remove the last letter from the string so we can do we can use substring so player.text equals player.text.substring from the first index until the last minus one so we get the full length minus one and there we go now we have index zero to the next to last index and that will remove the last character in the player text output text and if none of these are true then when well, then we want to add whatever text is on the key the letter a b c and so on so now we need to create the player output text and that's an empty game object whoops an empty game object with a text mesh pro inside of it 
or as a child of it, it would be in this case. There we go. I'm going to name it to make it clear. Let's also add the tag so that we can get it in the script and apply the tag. Now we need to resize the text and the canvas for the text. Something like this should be good. I want it to be kind of close to the keyboard, like a screen would be. And I realize we need to null check the key, because if the object that triggers does not have a text mesh pro, then the key will be null, and that means it is not a key, so we do not want to do anything then. And that's why we need to put a null check and wrap everything inside it. And let's test it out. Oh, we still have something. Uh, I think the tag has the wrong name. Oh, yeah. yeah, we need to create a new tag. It's uh, I switched the words up. Let's change the tag and we can also remove the old one so we do not do that again. Let's test it out. But first we need to change what I talked about earlier. If you didn't do that, we need to change the days to get component in children. And then we test. Check that out. That's pretty fast typing for VR, I'd say. But we didn't get any feedback from the keys. So let's do it like this. Let's get the keyed feedback script or component of the key whenever we hit a key. And use it like this instead. And we also need to say key hit so that we get the feedback. So key hit equals true. And then move it to the very bottom, just below the else. And there we go. In the next video, I will publish this week sometime, I will show you how to connect this to a database. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe guys.